That looks nice, Henry, but uh, will it work? Well, look at it. It's beautiful. I saw a beautiful horse once that couldn't run. I would demonstrate what Mr. Coates and the entire countryside would see. You'll have to take my word. It'll work. I just hope what you're printing is worthy of my run. Citizens of a new America, this is your revolution. Join it. Signed, the Yankee Doodle Society. It seems to be much ado about nothing. There are only 200 people in Chester. What possible effect could it have on the war? Who said anything about Chester? We're going to Philadelphia. Then you spoke to General Lafayette. Yes. He feels that these leaflets will have a much more important effect there. When the citizens of Philadelphia read this, they'll know that there are still people fighting for independence. They won't lose hope. And there will be many there who will want to join the fight. But Philadelphia... Jeremy, the British have a very large garrison there. And they'll read it too. at the noon hour. Oh, really? Actually, I find it quite a pleasant place, sir. Now that it's ours. Oh, so you think it's ours, do you? <laughs> it's not the revolutionaries in uniform I worry about. Those one can recognize. See that state hall over there? Yeah. That's where they signed that seditious declaration of independence, or whatever they call it. That was one year ago. At exactly midday, they rang that independence bell up there. Not to toll the hour, mind you, but to signify their defiance. It still rings. Every day, every noon hour. Lieutenant Stewart, would you wager how many of these civilians are being prompted nearer and nearer to the rebel cause by the daily peeling, the daily reminder of that thing up there? <laughs> This is your revolution. Join it. Radical maniacs. Before the year's out, we'll blow every man of them into the sea. We're officers of engineers, Lieutenant, not artillery. It isn't the men, it's the idea. It's the spark of the thing that needs stifling. Well, you simple farm boys. We shall now proceed to market with my father's molasses and learn if anything interesting has been happening today in Philadelphia. Stuart, unless General Howe objects, I'd say that whoever dropped those leaflets today did us an invaluable service. Sir, by noon tomorrow, I'll destroy that bloody bell, the revolution, and them with it. Well, gentlemen, I will...
would say it was a profitable afternoon in the big city. <laughs> Jeremy, would Mayor Larkin really be so shocked to find out that his son was an active revolutionary? My father would be shocked to find out that I was an active anything. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now, what do you make of that? Is it possible the American taxpayer is actually seeing his funds at work? This isn't just highway beautification. Filling up potholes, shoring up a bridge. You can stop right there, my lads. We've been looking for you three. For us? For you. Just head along to the bridge. We're on our way back to Chester, Corporal. Right now, you're on your way to give a bit of time and muscle in His Majesty's service. Objections? No, sir. Right. Follow me. Something unusual brewing here. They never impress road travelers for labor. <laughs> Convoy across this bridge tomorrow morning, then an hour after sunup. So no more rest periods for these men till the job's done. Yes, sir. Sergeant, this job is extremely important. I shall brook no delays, and I shall listen to no excuses. Yes. Some fresh water for the officers. Yes. I shall want you and the work crews back in Philadelphia well before dawn. Yes, sir. Well, I should say that come the noon hour tomorrow, these good God-fearing revolutionaries will be reading their Leviticus in a rather different light. <laughs> Get them up and at it, Sergeant. All right, back to work, you sluggard. Come on, let's jump to it. Now we're after sunup. Well, we'd better get out of here now if we expect to pass that word along in time to do any good. Well, maybe Henry got your message. Maybe, but we can't count on it. to us, sir, as if they were bringing something out of Philadelphia rather than into it. What device, a weapon, do they have in the city heavy enough to require such preparation of the road? The bridges. And you heard nothing further, Jeremy? No, sir, not that I can remember. Just that Leviticus business. Huh? Ah, yes, I'd forgotten that. The British Major said that by noon tomorrow, we'd be reading our Leviticus in a different light, for whatever that's worth. Leviticus. The inscription. Chapter 25, verse 10. No, I'm no more a student of the Bible than you, my friend. But I do recall the things that first brought me to your country and to your cause. Here it is. Proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. The words engraved on the great independence bell that hangs atop your state hall in Philadelphia. The Liberty Bell? This morning, your Yankee Doodle Society practiced our propaganda. Tomorrow morning, the British will practice their propaganda. Quite cleverly, too. General, that bell has become a symbol. Were it cracked and rusted and unusable, it would still be as vital a part of our fight as any weapon of war could ever be. We can't let them take it. They won't. Cannot prevent their taking it. But while they're transporting it, that is a different matter. Quietly, men. Quietly. Lieutenant, 
you will deliver the bell into the hands of the Commandant at Chester. He will be responsible for its passage across the river to New Jersey. Yes, sir. And I have seen to it, sir, that couriers will be distributing our handbills at first light to every town and hamlet in the colony, just like the leaflets we had dropped on us. Splendid. I want this fair Commonwealth digesting its breakfast with the news that its so-called Liberty Bell is on its way to one of our foundries to be melted down for the making of British cannon. Let the revolutionaries rally around that news, eh? No, sir. Although I'd, um, I'd feel more comfortable with more than just one squad of men for an escort. There'll be more, trailing in the woods half a mile to your rear. A full company. <laughs> In that case, sir, I only hope there is an ambush. We better warn the general. We simply have not the men to go against such a force. Even from ambush. I'm sorry, my friends. We know that, general, and we have a suggestion. That column has to pass a crossroads before it reaches Chester. What if a column of soldiers from Chester Garrison, who weren't really soldiers from Chester, were to meet that column and receive the bell before it ever reaches the dock outside town? And take it in the wrong direction? And deliver a somewhat different bell to the new commandant waiting with the soldiers at the dock. Quite simple, really. Simple. It's already almost 8 o'clock. We'll reach the dock well before noon. Can such a plan be worked out and executed in such a time? And with the General's permission to try? And a few of his men to try it with? You mean, while the General remains here, brought to tears by an action? They also serve, who only stand and wait, sir. Sergeant, you will provide me with civilian clothing at once. Stand and wait, indeed. Might you not soften your ardor a bit before addressing your own counsel? If my ardor was soft, I wouldn't be mayor of Chester. Now tell me, Reverend Wells, do you endorse what is printed here? The confiscation of the bell that's part of our, our, our heritage of the Commonwealth? It is not my province to endorse or condemn as a layman might the things laymen do for layman's interest. Now you sound older and drier than I am. Where's the fire in your veins, boy? Good morning, Mr. Larkin. Elizabeth. Reverend Wells. Ah, uh, Mr. Coach. What is this stupidity? Just one minute, Mr. Coates. <clears throat> Elizabeth, I sent that rascal Jeremy into Philadelphia to sell some molasses. And I haven't seen him since. I don't suppose you have, my dear. Why, Mr. Larkin, no. But I did hear the British were impressing travelers into service on the road yesterday. Jeremy might have been detained to work for them a while. Calling a town council meeting, 10 o'clock of a good work morning, over some silly bell. What do you think of this nonsense, Reverend? Well, as I reminded the mayor only a moment ago, ah. it's not my province to either endorse or condemn as a layman might the things laymen do. Don't mind my uncle, Mr. Mayor. One day women will have the franchise and I'll vote for you, I promise. Well, there's a pair of fantasies for one day. My son working and a woman voting. <laughs> good day, Elizabeth. Go well, stay well. The demonstration I urge is not against the government, but rather a peaceful protest against the destruction of a coveted possession of the people. The people are British subjects, Mayor Larkin. And even if you have forgotten it, ours is not the right to demonstrate against legal authority. Gentlemen, please. If we have not the right to disagree, then none of us are subjects of the crown, but rather slaves of the crown. Then is the mayor of this town a revolutionary sympathizer. Oh, sir, but neither am I a coward, afraid to make honest petition. Coward. Mr. Coates! Mr. Coates! Mr. Coates! Such animosity twixt old neighbors. Will you not return, Reverend? sir? There is a revolution in these colonies, and it is spreading. If confiscating that absurd bell will serve the maintenance of law and order, then I am for it. And as a man of God, 
So should you be. What are your feelings, Reverend? My feelings? Well, I try to do the Lord's labor, sir. To indulge myself in personal feelings would be improper. But God is impartial. I must be so. I see. Good day, I got here as fast as I could. Will your uncle be staying in town? Yes, your father called a town council meeting. Jeremy, what in the My world? My friends will be needing your barn there for a bit, and that wagon that your uncle's so proud of. Jeremy, will you please just tell me? Now, now, Elizabeth. Mademoiselle, vous êtes très gentille et très jolie. You are very brave and very beautiful young lady. We've got less than two hours to build ourselves a Liberty Bell. Now, for the shape. A solid mound of that hay with a skeleton of plow handles. On this wagon right here, I think. I don't know, Henry. What if we can't do it? We'll do it. Hey, plow handles. Tell you the truth, the whole thing seems a little... Isaac, I am your friend. Please have the goodness not to throw reason and logic in the path of a visionary. young Mr. Laughlin would look like in a British uniform? Yes, sir. Boys, check with supply tent. We'll relieve those tired sentries. Jerry, why don't we pay them a little visit?
Never argue with the general. Looks to be about your size, sir. Not big enough. more closely. Lieutenant Blake, Chester Garrison. Well, Stuart, 43rd Engineering. What are you doing way out here, Blake? Courtesy of the Garrison, Lieutenant. Our new Commandant suggested that we take that monster off your hands here at the crossroads. You and your men are free to take the direct road into Chester. Have a pint or two to wash the dust down. Where is your Commandant? Uh, Captain Shelby, I believe. Shoreham. Tough one he is. Down at the dock already, bedeviling the ferryman about ropes and pulleys and whatnot. I see. And the rest of your men? The uh, Commandant said he wanted only these few of us on the road with the bell itself. Actually, we've half the garrison concealed in the hills twixt here in the dock. Oh, I see. Hoping for a Patriot ambush, eh? Actually, we did the same thing ourselves. Got 50 men in the woods back of us. <laughs> oh, quite. Bevins, ride back and tell the trailing company we've been relieved. They're to head back to Philadelphia. Yes, sir. That right-hand road there takes you straight to the center of town. Eat and drink your fill. Compliments of Captain Shoreham and Chester Garrison. Thank you. Then to town with you, men. I'll catch you up in a bit. You're not joining your men, Lieutenant? Well, of course not. These orders of mine are for the Commandant himself. You know that. Uh, of course, of course. Actually, though, to uh, personally witness the send-off of this uh, symbol of revolutionary misfits is well worth the foregoing of a pint of ale. Orders or no orders. Ah, yes. Yes, indeed. My sentiments exactly, Stuart. Really? You here. He won't. Thanks again, Elizabeth. It's tall enough and heavy enough. Now we have to find some canvas to cover it with. What's the matter? If that commandant's the nervous type and sends a patrol out along the road, to look for the bell that hasn't arrived when it should have arrived. Henry, you're not being a very comforting visionary. Jeremy knows he's got to hurry. I hope. The bell should be here any moment. Now, these Philadelphia troops are spit and polish regulars. So I'll strip the hide off any man who makes Chester Garrison look slovenly. Is that clear? Cut across here. And cut across where? What is this, Blake? What the places are you doing? What we're not doing, Lieutenant, is killing you. Unless we have to. in favor of a peaceful demonstration against the loss of the bell. Two in favor. Those opposed? 
Two opposed and one abstention. And one abstention. So be it. We do nothing. One point only now, lad. We're running awfully late. Complications? That depends on him. Couldn't find enough canvas. We'll have to use the cover off the real bell. You're laughable, the lot of you. You'll never pass that haystack off of the bell. Our concern was passing one of ourselves as you at the dock, especially since some of the faces here are known in Chester. But now we will not have to try. You will. Will I? I'll tell you what I'll try, sir. I'll try seeing that bell melted down into cannon and firing it down your scurvy throats one day. Lieutenant, we're not comfortable with violence, nor with imposing our will upon others. But don't mistake reticence for indecision. We'll wait ten more minutes. The bell is not here by then. B squad will move out and reconnoiter the area to the crossroads. taken my wagon. You saw the yellow wheels? That was my wagon. British soldiers, Uncle. They just commandeered it, probably. They'll bring it back. But the bell, that, that was the bell. And why should they take that into the wood with no guard, no guard at all? Turn around. Where are we going? To the British barracks. If the commandant knows about this, fine. If not, then someone's just made off with that cursed Liberty Bell. If there were a legitimate delay, we'd have been informed. I must therefore assume that the column has met with difficulty. B squad and C squad will reconnoiter the... <laughs> Lieutenant Stewart, sir. You're late. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Something wrong, Lieutenant? No, sir. Blasted wagon just fouled a wheel. Just as long as you've made it safely. Yes, sir. A squad, get that ferry alongside, ready to load the wagon. I want to be back on this side of the river before noon. With your permission, Lieutenant, Chester Garrison now assumes possession and responsibility. Unless you'd like to inspect the wagon first, sir. No, I don't believe so rather a slap in the face to your fine fellows. Well, thank you, Lieutenant. My respects to the Philadelphia garrison. Thank you, sir. Isak's down the road with the bell. Those foundrymen in New Jersey are going to get quite a shock receiving a haystack for melting. Nothing for the shock you scum are due for. Lieutenant, you've acted with reason this far. Do not spoil it now. Who the devil are you? General Lafayette. At your service. General Lafayette. You talk of reason. I know of no legitimate officer who'd care to reason with a general who joins the very rabble he commands. Henry, will you escort this legitimate officer to the rear? Relax, Jeremy. As long as we see you as rabble and me as illegitimate, we shall have a chance. And by the way, you and your men might feel more comfortable out of those uniforms.
All of you. Every man will fall in outside this building at once! Lieutenant! Lieutenant, they've got the bell! Mind you! Oh. Him. He'll bring them back for us for sure. In this open country, it's gonna be a bit difficult hiding this tiny thing under a rock. Knowing our general direction, all they have to do is spread out and... There's one place they won't look for us. In Chester. In town? You expect to hide that in town? Well, I don't exactly expect it. I'm just gonna sort of... pray for it. Are you mad, Jeremy Larkin, or merely a sacrilegious prankster? Reverend. Your church is the only closed-in building in Chester with doors tall enough and wide enough to admit the wagon. We have no other place to take it. The Lord opens his doors to minds and to hearts, not things. I cannot help you. Reverend, if a man of a different belief sought sanctuary in your church, would you turn him away? Of course not. Well, the bell represents the beliefs of most Americans. Now, we don't ask you to change your beliefs, only to sanctify ours. We can't sit this close to town too long without being spotted by somebody. He gives no signal. He still just stands with the reverend, talking. Do you suppose that I enjoy being an impartial observer? A man trying to be old, and wise before his natural time. But God looks at all men impartially, Jeremy. That I do know. And if I ever hope to be his good servant, how can I do otherwise? How can I take sides? How have I the right? Not the right. The obligation. I'm sorry, Reverend, but I cannot believe that God is aloof, removed or remote. You are a man trying to help other men. But if you're afraid of being human enough to get involved yourself... I'm sorry, Reverend. I meant no disrespect. Good day. Jeremy. It would seem that... I myself have found the church a very safe place in which to hide. Bring your bell. Our bell. Still no sign, sir. It's impossible. They've got to be out here somewhere. Unless... We'll need more men for the search anyway. Everyone, back into the town!
my church hasn't been this crowded in quite a while. Well, with any luck, we won't be imposing on you more then. What is it? British coming back. It certainly won't search here. I didn't think they'd come back to town either. Jeremy, when the town council voted this morning, I abstained. I will not do so in the future. I will not do so now. We'll cut across to the dock. Meet the commandant coming back. Now we saw them. Oh. Undoubtedly, they've already searched where they thought we'd be. Perhaps now's the time to be there. Right. Reverend, we thank you. Oh, no. I thank you. And I do hope your father will soon be allowed to know the true caliber of his son. Now, if you don't mind, your wagon scraped a pew on the way in. And perhaps I'd better see it out again. If the general approves it, that there's a way we may properly thank the Reverend. And pay our respects to the community as well. This is a pretty chancy thing, General. You could be well away from Chester by now. Proclaim liberty throughout the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. That shouldn't be well away from Chester, Sergeant. Not today. of metal. We'll get it back ourselves. No need for the Chester garrison. At the gallop! General? British soldiers are coming. Some of you stay here with the bell. The rest back down by the road. No gunfire. We're too close to town.
back to the bell. It's almost the noon hour, my friend. Well, I see that most of our town council is here. As requested. Heard from your son yet, sir? Jeremy? Oh, he's probably enjoying himself with some wench or other, somewhere or other. I doubt that he would be greatly moved by these proceedings. You members of the town council, the firing of English cannon at this noon hour signifies not just the death of a bell, but the snuffing out of a ridiculous symbol of a half-baked rebellion. Is your town fully aware of this? There's not a man in Chester that will miss the full meaning of this, sir. Good. A lesson in authority, gentlemen. by now. What's that, Reverend? Listen to it, Mr. Larkin. The voice of a few men who believe in something and would share with us the strength they have learned from their believing. Listen. It'll have to be hidden from now on. But people are going to need the sound of it every now and then. I know I will. It'll be heard, Isaac. From hillsides, from caves if necessary. But it'll be heard. Sound maybe, but the same meaning. 